This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Sunday, April the 21st, 2019. It's San Jacinto Day in Texas. It's a partial holiday which recalls the final battle of the Texas Revolution, in which Texas won its independence from Mexico in 1836. The big event is a battle reenactment of the very short battle fought in Harris County, Texas, where modern-day Houston sits. It's also St. Anselm's Day in the Catholic Church. Anselm of Canterbury, a.k.a. Anselm of Aosta, a.k.a. Anselm of Beck, was a Benedictine monk and philosopher born about 1033 A.D. and died today in 1109. He was English and is one of the great thinkers of the medieval world. He's considered the founder of scholasticism, the school with which St. Thomas Aquinas is typically associated. Students of philosophy will recognize his name in association with the so-called ontological argument. The argument is often mislabeled as a proof for the existence of God and dismissed because it doesn't actually prove God's existence but it was never meant as a proof for the existence of God. And so it is logical that it would fail to be one. Anselm argued that God can be defined as, quote, that than which nothing greater can be thought. It follows then that if God only existed in the mind, it would be possible to think of a being which existed in reality and in the mind. So God must be defined as existing in reality and in the mind. As such, the greatest possible being must exist both in the mind and in reality. Many modern philosophers, including René Descartes and Gottfried Leibniz, would use the same pattern in their own philosophical writings about God. Anselm was named a doctor of the church in 1720 and remains a staple of philosophy classes everywhere. Today is the traditional founding date of Rome in 753 BC. Romulus, after a scuffle with his brother Remus, walks into the swamp amidst the seven hills and makes a sacrifice to God upon the Palatine Hill, which he then begins to fortify. Then he lays out the boundaries of the city and makes another sacrifice. And then he and his followers set to work building the eternal city a project that would go on continuously for 12 and a half centuries until the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the 6th century AD. Of course, the city of Rome remains atop the same hills and on top of the same swamp. Today in 1509, Henry VIII ascended the throne of England for the first time at the death of his father, Henry VII. Henry VIII was generally a good king and a very good Catholic at first. He was named Defender of the Faith by Pope Leo X, but Henry had some troubles in the royal bedroom, and he really, really wanted and needed a son. After wife number one, the Pope granted him a very rare royal annulment from Catherine of Aragon. Of course, the Pope was studiously unaware of the king's affair with Anne Boleyn. But still, there was no little Henry running around the palace, so Anne lost her head, literally. Then came Jane Seymour, and Anne of Cleves, and Catherine Howard, and Catherine Parr, and somewhere in there, Henry wanted another annulment. But the Pope replied with the fancy equivalent of, you have got to be kidding. Henry threw a tantrum and declared himself the head of the church in England, which all too soon became the Church of England. Henry murdered, destroyed, and devastated the Catholic faith and martyred hundreds of consecrated religious, priests, and bishops, all while he himself grew too fat to walk and found himself covered with painful, pus-filled boils. He died at the age of 55 and left his kingdom to his only son, then aged nine. The boy died within six years of taking the throne. Henry's legacy is precariously upheld in England, but among Catholics, he's on par with Nero and Napoleon. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.